Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Jess L and Sean N. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. If you're on social media, I would imagine you've seen that narrative going around right now that Tesla is basically now betting the entire company on solving FSD. I just wanna take a second to share some data and show why I disagree strongly with this sentiment. I also think it's very important to separate and add the nuance to the conversation of FSD versus autonomy. Those should be two different things. FSD is something that Tesla is selling right now that's already providing value to Tesla customers and investors. And autonomy, on the other hand, is not here yet. This would be my understanding of robo-taxis in the future. Just some quick numbers. This is the number of vehicles Tesla delivered last year. If we assume the FSD take rate is even 2% to be conservative, times each person paying $15,000 for this software, that's about $394 million in revenue. But we could also consider this that much in profit because this is near 100% margins. Now, yes, Tesla is paying people for FSD and all of the development for hardware for, et cetera, but those development costs are already baked into Tesla's financials and every car gets this hardware and software, even if it's not active. So let's just consider it as profit. We would then divide that by 3.475 billion shares of Tesla that are outstanding, fully diluted. And that's about 11 cents per share just coming from Tesla's FSD subscription. So unless Sean is erroneously referring to autonomy using the terminology FSD, the current version of Tesla's FSD is definitely already greater than zero value for investors. Sean went on to say, why would anybody pay a 40 multiple for Tesla stock? Well, the thing is, Wall Street really looks at the forward-looking PE. So for 2024, using Wall Street's latest estimate of $5.10 per share, Tesla's current forward PE is actually 30. And if we take Tesla's growth rate, which over the long term should be in the neighborhood of 30 in terms of both volumes and earnings per share, well, that makes the peg ratio right around one. So you could argue very easily it's actually fairly valued. That's of course just using these simple basic metrics. Getting back to how James said Tesla is betting the entire income statement on the future potential of FSD, I would push back is giving up a few basis points of gross margin in the short term to continually drive sales through a recession, betting the entire income statement? I would say absolutely not. In case anybody's forgotten, Tesla has an entire Tesla energy division that seems poised to carry the auto division through any gross margin compression for the year. For the entirety of 2022, Tesla's energy division generated $288 million in profit. In quarter one of this year, same division did $168 million in profit. So there's definitely a path to Tesla generating a billion dollars in profit just from the energy division alone this year. Let's just be conservative and say the number works out to $800 million in incremental profit that Tesla generates from energy this year. If again, you divide that by the number of fully diluted shares outstanding, that gives us an extra 23 cents in earnings per share. So Tesla is not betting a single cent from this number on the future potential of FSD. With this last statement in green, I'm not sure if James is subtly implying that the business can't stand on its own without FSD, but if that's his take, then I staunchly disagree. Tesla has virtually no debt, 22 billion in the bank. It's leading the entire industry toward our 100% EV future. And we're only at around 7% market penetration, depending on geography, while becoming arguably one of the best manufacturing companies on the planet. It's one of the leaders in the battery energy storage revolution with Powerwall and Megapack, and it's set up beautifully to capitalize on the IRA incentives for the next decade. Tesla literally created a new battery cell and is making it in-house. It has absurd upside with things like Optimus and Dojo, and I of course could go on and on. And yeah, if FSD hits and eventually morphs into robo-taxis and autonomy, then it's true. Nobody has any idea what's coming when it comes to the valuation for Tesla. However, 
even along the way there on that path, this business line is already very profitable for Tesla. And it's also providing real value to hundreds of thousands of people. So I've been saying for a while, I do think we should expect some level of multiple compression for Tesla stock in the short term, given everything in the macro. But this take just seems like a knee jerk reaction, swinging the pendulum way too far the other direction. On the Q1 call, Tesla said that they're expecting to start producing cathode material from this facility in Austin by the end of this year. So I figured we'd take a few seconds to drop in and check on the progress because we haven't seen a drone flyover now in a couple months. So as you can see, the walls are up and it's coming along nicely. Here we have some data from the ACEA looking at European Union market share in March, specifically battery electric vehicles coming in at 13.9% for the month. As you can see, no, that number does not include hybrid vehicles. That's just full electric. But I wanted to point out we're not seeing the decline in petrol sales that we would expect to yet. In March, new registrations for petrol cars were up 29.9% year over year, and 1 million petrol cars were sold in the first quarter of this year, up 18.6% year over year. I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but with Troy sharing this and it getting a lot of circulation, I figured it's good to touch on it for a moment. First of all, this chart is the total United States inventory listing. So it is true that these numbers do not include vehicles in transit to customers. These are actual listings on the Tesla website for new inventory. I also see too many people erroneously saying, well, there's only 2,500 total. So what's the big deal? Tesla's making hundreds of thousands of cars a quarter. Well, the way this works is this. So here are those new inventory listings. Let's say Tesla actually has 20 of this exact vehicle. Well, they're not gonna have 20 listings exactly the same. They'll just have this one, even if there's actually 20 available. Meaning this number right here is actually higher, but how much higher? Looking at the slide deck for Q1, Tesla's global vehicle inventory days of supply is still only at 15. I've said before, as long as this number is below 30, in my opinion, all is well. Trying to sustain this number under 10 like it was last year during the height of the supply chain issues is just not sustainable for a company growing as quickly as it is globally like Tesla. Finding Tesla's inventory number is pretty easy. You just solve for X in this equation, but I already did it. So let's say the inventory is 85,000. You just divide that by the current quarter total deliveries, which was 422,875. Then you multiply that number by 75 in order to get that 15 days of supply. So if you wanted to take Tesla's current global inventory number and actually divide that by the number on this new listing inventory chart of about 2,500, that would be a multiplier of about 34 from the raw number that we see on the chart. But be careful with that because obviously that number will fluctuate greatly week to week, month to month. So that's really just a very loose rule of thumb. Either way, for whatever it may be worth to you, I personally am not at all concerned about these levels. It's something I'm watching, absolutely, but I've been expecting this to some degree. We have the IEA predicting today that nearly one in five cars sold globally this year will be electric. So globally, we're heading toward a 20% market penetration rate. That would be up from what was only 4% back in 2020. A US Labor Board official has ruled that a Tesla supervisor at a service center in Florida basically broke some rules. They had an employee complaining that new hires were being paid more than the people that had been working there. Apparently they told him to be quiet and then later that person who brought it up was actually fired. Tesla of course pushed back saying they quickly posted a notice saying that their employees could actually talk about their pay. So far no word on fines or repercussions. Either way I would imagine it will be pretty trivial in the grand scheme of things. Honda is using GM's architecture for its upcoming prologue in 2024 but now Honda is saying come 2025 for their second full EV they're going to use their own e architecture architecture for a mid to large size EV in North America. Car and Driver shared this image with the article, but this is actually just a Chinese concept car, not necessarily what we're going to be getting in North America in 2025. We've heard rumors, but from Benchmark, both BYD and CATL are set to roll out sodium ion batteries 
in electric vehicles, BYD will actually be making their own in-house and introducing it first in the upcoming Seagull, which is supposed to start at $11,000. It's going to be a compact hatchback with a 30 or a 38 kilowatt hour battery, but the smaller 30 kilowatt hour version is said to use sodium ion batteries and get up to 190 miles. Sadly, they don't say what cycle this is on, so the EPA equivalent could be lower, but either way, mass production is for later this year. The point being, it's time to watch the rise of sodium ion. This Friday, Elon is set to go have a chat with Bill Maher, so if you're interested, be aware. How about this one? Huawei and other Chinese self-driving car companies are developing alternative tech to high definition maps because the precision required for autonomy makes the mapping process prohibitively expensive. We've been collecting data in Shanghai for one or two years, but we still have not been able to cover all 9,000 kilometers of the city's roads. It's almost like Tesla has been onto something here. Here we have it, Renault is saying they're gonna have new software architecture of future vehicles that will be on par by 2026 with that of the industry leader, Tesla. They said a software defined vehicle design will be at the heart of Renault's future electric vehicle entity, Ampere. And they say working with Google and Qualcomm, they'll be able to go from 100 processors currently down to 20 in this future architecture. They then go on to brag about things like OTA updates saying, this is similar with Tesla. In 2026, they're going to have the same approach. They have the same EV architecture approach. In 2026, we will be at the level of Tesla. Here's the problem with that. Renault has no clue where Tesla is going to be come 2026 because Tesla is not a target sitting still, it is moving. But this is basically an admission that they are at least three years behind, and I would imagine Tesla's present day form. I guess some level of prop should be given here for the candor alone, but to say something like this publicly cannot be a great look and can't be great for sales. We got a no text, no context picture of an Idra Gigapress shipping somewhere. Maybe it's going to Austin. Maybe it's somewhere around the globe. We just don't know yet. You can find me on Twitter at Dylan Loomis 22. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.